Attach the selected valgus angle bushing, 5 degrees, 6 or 7 degrees, to the valgus alignment guide. Check the bushing position to make sure that left is facing anteriorly when operating on the left knee and right is facing anteriorly when operating on a right knee. Attach a modular T-handle to the IM rod and insert through the alignment assembly. Assemble the distal femoral cutting block onto the valgus alignment guide. Positioning the block at the primary resection level will ensure the cut will equal the distal medial thickness of the femoral prosthesis. Lock by pressing the lever in a horizontal position toward the medial side. Open the femoral canal with the 9.5 mm intramedullary drill. Slide the intramedullary rod of the assembly into the femoral canal until the alignment guide contacts the distal femur. Orient rotation of the assembly neutral to the posterior condyles and impact one or both of the floating spikes into the distal femur. Using non-headed speed pins, pin the distal femoral cutting block to the anterior femur using the holes marked zero. Once adequate distal femoral resection is noted, an additional headed or non-headed speed pin should be placed obliquely to provide additional stability. Unlock the lever on the valgus alignment guide. Remove the intramedullary rod and the valgus alignment assembly using the universal extractor. Only the distal femoral cutting block should remain on the femur. Resect the distal femur. Then remove the distal femoral cutting block, but leave the two parallel pins in position. Place the distal femoral gauge on the resected distal femur and bring the knee into extension. If the knee achieves terminal extension, proceed without recutting. If not, shift distal cutting block 2 millimeters and recut. With the distal femoral gauge in place and the knee in acceptable terminal extension, mark the anterior tibia as an initial depth estimate for the medial tibia resection. This is just an initial starting point and will require fine-tune adjustment with a stylus at the tibia preparation step. Place the left or right Journey 2 DCF sizing guide on the resected distal femur. With the medial paddle made it to the posterior medial condyle and the sizing guide flush to the distal resection, place a 45 mm headed speed pin through the hole just above the medial paddle. This will secure the sizing guide for the remainder of its use. If there exists a known flexion extension imbalance, unlock Translate and relock the drill guide appropriately. Ensure the lateral paddle is mated to the posterior lateral condyle. Begin with the paddle set to 3 degrees. Rotate away from 3 degrees if it is desirable to match the AP or epicondylar axis, or if it is desirable to balance the medial and lateral flexion gaps. Once both the AP and rotational measures are desirable relative to the anatomic landmarks, Drill about a 1 inch, 25 mm deep hole through each of the two holes in the drill guide. Finally, assemble the journey sizing stylus to the guide and estimate the AP femoral size. Position the stylus tip just lateral of the anterior trochlear sulcus. The Journey 2 DCF sizing guide is designed to reference the posterior condyles. At 3 degrees, the guide will make AP resections at 3 degrees externally rotated from the posterior condylar axis. The guide also allows for rotation between 0 degrees and 6 degrees relative to the posterior condylar axis. Position the spikes on the DCF AP femoral block into the pre-drilled holes. Use the mallet to impact the AP block assembly until the block is flush with the resected distal femur. Remove the AP block impactor. Note that the posterior resection will match the implant thickness when the highlighted indicator in the AP block knob is aligned with post-ref. Use the angel wing to check the location of the anterior cutting slot. 
Make any necessary anterior or posterior adjustments to avoid overstuffing the patella femoral joint, overstuffing the flexion space, or femoral notching. Complete the cuts in the order indicated on the block. Before beginning any tibia preparation, ensure that as much of the medial and lateral meniscus is removed as possible, which will help with exposure and bone removal. With the knee inflection, use the tibial sizing template to visualize base plate rotation and medial lateral placement according to the following steps. Align the sizing template in the optimal position for midline medial lateral coverage. Ensure that the anterior medial and anterior lateral portions of the sizing template do not have significant underhang or overhang. Ensure the sizing template has fully captured the ACL. Do not set the tibia rotation based off of the placement of the femur, orientation of the ACL fibers, or the tibia tubercle, as these landmarks could lead to poor tibia coverage. Note, the tibia sizing template and corresponding markings should be as far lateral as possible without sacrificing the ACL. There is a tendency to medialize this alignment, and that needs to be avoided to prevent medial implant overhang. Insert the ankle clamp into the distal end of the alignment tube, and thread the locking pin into the ankle clamp. After the ankle clamp is moved into the proper position, lock into place with the gold knob. Choose the correct 3-degree left or right datum block. Place the appropriate left or right 3-degree tibial datum block on the non-spike fixation rod. Tighten the central screw to lock the block into position. Introduce the rod into the extra medullary assembly and adjust and lock the locking screw in the assembly. Place the arms of the extra medullary alignment clamp around the ankle and adjust the distal medial lateral slide directly over the middle of the tibio tailor joint, which is also approximated by the second ray of the foot proximal to the malleoli. Mate the datum block to the anterior tibia by making the groove roughly in line with the medial marking from the tibia sizing template to ensure the block is not too lateral. Then align the top of the datum block with a provisional depth mark from the distal femoral gauge and place a 65 mm headed speed pin through the upper half of the datum block's provisional slot to stabilize. Do not fully seat pin. Direct the headed speed pin into the upper half of the provisional slot as the distal femoral gauge marking tends to overestimate the tibial resection if the knee is hyperextended in the distal cut step. Next, set the slope and varus valgus of the extra medullary alignment rod neutral to the tibial mechanical axis and lock using the EM tower assembly. Finally, set depth using the depth stylus to reference the center of the medial tibia plateau. In the case of extreme medial wear, Reference the lateral tibia or adjust the stylus for appropriate compensation. Fix the datum block by pinning through the 0mm set of holes with 65mm non-rim speed pins. Tighten the headed speed pin in the slot for additional stabilization. Inflection. Assemble the orientation stylus by engaging the foot into the tibia datum block and ensure the arms line up with the provisional eminence marks. Lock the orientation stylus by pushing up on the gold locking cam. Verify that the cruciates are inside the resection planes, indicated by the outer surface of the orientation stylus arms. Before locking the orientation stylus into place, check with an angel wing to ensure the cutting plane lines up with the previous tibia markings. After the gold lever is used to lock the orientation stylus into place, drive an eighth inch drill or 3.2 by 110 millimeter pin into each of the medial and lateral undercut protection holes. Be careful not to protrude through the posterior cortical bone. Use a 1.5 mm thick reciprocating saw blade to make the medial and lateral sagittal resections first. Use a narrow oscillating saw blade to finish the medial resection. Remove the drills, pins, and orientation stylus. When removing the lateral drill pin, mark the hole as it will be needed during the lateral tibial cut step.
Insert the femoral trial onto the prepared femoral bone using the femoral trial impactor. Select the best size medial base plate trial. Find the medial insert trial thickness, which results in 1 to 2 mm laxity in extension and flexion. Red insert trials represent recut options for balance management. Each red insert trial corresponds to an instrumented recut option, more posterior slope, and or more depth. If the thinnest 8 mm neutral insert option does not fit into the joint in extension and flexion, a red 6 mm gap stick can be used which signifies a 2 mm recut for depth is required. If the flexion space is right relative to the extension space, downsloped insert trials are available to simulate a 2 degree recut of slope. In this scenario, a 5 degree cutting block can replace the 3 degree primary datum block. Be sure to prepare for the lateral resection by re-drilling the lateral eminence hole through the orientation stylus after it is attached to the datum block setup for the recut. Blue insert trials represent implant options for laxity and flexion relative to extension, less posterior slope. Each blue insert trial corresponds to an insert implant option. Locate the lateral eminence pinhole. Press the floating pin of the lateral saw capture block into the hole while slotting the posterior tip of the saw capture behind the patellar tendon. Attach the lateral saw capture block to the datum block. Adjust the lateral saw capture for optimal fit against the lateral anterior tibia and under the patellar ligament and lock using the datum block. Resect the lateral tibia using a narrow oscillating saw blade. Select the full insert trial option that provided optimal medial balance. Gauge and ensure 1 to 2 mm of medial and lateral extension laxity. Gauge and ensure 1 to 2 mm of medial flexion laxity. Lateral flexion laxity may be greater, but a minimum of 1 to 2 mm is suggested. Assess knee stability, anterior posterior, medial lateral, internal and external rotation to ensure sufficient ligament function. Flex and extend the knee, checking for femoral implant impingement on the ACL or tibial eminence. Adjust the femoral trial medial lateral position if necessary and pin the trial. In the rare event of imbalance at this step, the same recut and implant options are available as during the medial tibial balance step. Using the angled face on the femoral trial as the guide, remove the anterior intercondylar femoral bone using a narrow saw blade. Select the appropriate size CR notch trial and engage the anterior portion of the notch trial first. Then, use the femoral impactor to impact the posterior portion of the notch trial until it sits flush with the femoral trial. Perform final trialing with patella and notch trial. If contact between femoral implant and cruciate ligaments is observed, consider adjusting medial lateral position of the femoral trial and repeating the femoral intercondylar notch preparation. Use the lug drill to prepare for the femoral lugs by drilling to the bottom of both distal holes in the femoral trial. Remove the tibial and femoral trials. Attach the anterior eminence chisel guide to the datum block and loosely engage the eminence chisel. Slide the eminence guide posteriorly as far as possible without resecting the ACL and lock the datum block. Use the anterior eminence chisel to resect the anterior eminence vertically first. Finish the anterior eminence resection by using an oscillating saw to complete transverse resection. Remove chisel guide, datum block, and pins. Place the appropriate tibial punch tray onto the tibia and ensure adequate fit and coverage. Attach the appropriate size tibial punch guide to the tibial punch tray. Pin in the posterior holes using two 6mm by 27mm tibial speed pins and then secure using two 6.5mm by 40mm speed pins in the anterior holes. Using the appropriate size tibial keel punch, 
Prepare for the keel through the tibial punch guide and tray. Remove all instruments from the joint and prepare to cement implants. It is recommended to use a curet or osteotome to clean out excess bone to ensure that the base plate implant will fully seed. The recommended time to prepare the patella is after all tibial and femoral cuts are made, but prior to trial placement. Attach the patella reamer guide to the patella and tighten the reamer guide on the patella. Use the patella calipers to measure the patella thickness through the collet and guide. Attach the patella reamer shaft assembly to the drill and lower the reamer through the patella reamer guide until the reamer dome contacts the patella. Lower the patellar depth stop until it contacts the patellar depth gauge. If the biconvex design is selected, use a towel clip to insert the appropriate diameter biconvex patella trial into the recess in the patella. If the resurfacing design is selected, use the patella caliper to reassess the patella thickness. Select the appropriate diameter resurfacing patella drill guide and slide it onto the patella reamer guide. Attach the patella reamer guide assembly to the ream patella and tighten the reamer guide on the patella. Flex the knee and place a thin bent homen laterally. Apply generous amounts of cement to the dry underside of the base plate, keel, onto the tibia surface and into the prepared keel trough. Use the tibial implant impactor and a mallet to fully seat the tibial base plate component onto the proximal tibia. Clear any debris from the locking mechanisms. If final trialing is desired, use the determined medial and lateral inserts and place them into the base plate implant. Adjust where appropriate. If balance is appropriate, insert the final insert implants. Grasp the anterior aspect of the lateral insert implant with the inserter tool and seat the insert implant posteriorly into the base plate until the insert begins to engage posteriorly. Using hand pressure, fully seat the insert implant applying a posterior force and then downward force on the anterior aspect of the insert to fully engage the locking mechanism. No impaction should be needed. Assemble the femoral implant impactor bumper, available in left and right, onto the femoral implant impactor. Unlock the knob completely. Press the thumb slide on the femoral implant impactor to push the dual arm mechanism upwards. Position the arms inside the intercondylar notch of the femoral component and release the thumb slide. Make sure the tips of the arms are sitting flush in the crescent-shaped grooves on the femoral component. Lock the knob until hand tight. Flex the knee to 90 degrees, keeping the thin bent home and lateral and removing the off-rank refractor. Place the femoral component onto the femur by positioning the proximal edge of the posterior condyles at the distal end of the posterior resection and rotating the femoral component to align the tips of the lugs to the prepared lug holes in the femur. Impact the femoral implant impactor until the distal surface is completely flush with the distal resection. Assemble the patellar cement clamp to the patellar reamer guide. 
Apply bone cement to the ream patella. Place the patellar implant onto the prepared patella. Clamp the patellar implant into the bone and remove the extruded cement. Close the arthrotomy by placing three ovicral sutures at the superior border of the patella, just distal to the VMO. A stitch is placed to close the VMO fascia. The remainder of the arthrotomy is closed in the standard fashion. Perform routine subcutaneous and skin closure. Radiographic note. The Journey 2 bicruciate knee system features an anatomical joint line in the AP view. The distal condyles of the femoral component will present a 3 degrees varus angle relative to the tibial component when correctly aligned.